Now I'm going to show you the IRT plot for polytomous data. So let's go ahead and um, look at graph. You want to make sure you're on the item estimates tab there. And we want to do IRT plot. Everything has moved over to the right. And if you look here at lines, in the plot dialog, this dialog includes four panels with options that affect the display of each plot. The item panel includes three checkboxes. Select the characteristic curve checkbox in this panel to the plot the item characteristic curve and choose the information function checkbox to add the item information function to the plot. You can add a legend to the plot by selecting the show legend checkbox. The IRT plot dialog creates plots for individual items and an overall person plot. The person plot will include the TCC if you select the characteristic curve checkbox in the person panel. The particular TCC it creates depends on the items you select in the dialog. If you select a single item, then the TCC will be the same as the item characteristic curve. If you select all items on the test, then the person plot will contain the TCC for the entire test. These same conventions apply to the TIF. You can plot the TIF or standard error function by selecting the information function checkbox or standard error checkbox res respectively. So that would be here. These two functions will be based on the only and only the items you select for the plots. Note that the values of the standard error function are very different from the values of the characteristic curve and information functions. Therefore, you should include the standard error function in its own plot. Do not select the characteristic curve or information function options when you select the standard error option. The curve type panel includes two options that mainly affect the plotting of polytomous items. If you would like to plot category characteristic curves, for all options of a polytomous item, then select Category Probability Radio button. If you would like to see the expected value function and said, then choose the expected score radio button. This latter option is preferred when you aim to include the information function in the plot for a polytomous item. Other than changing the y-axis label, this option will not affect the plot for a binary item because the expected value function and the probability of a correct response are the same. In the x-axis panel, Sorry, they were right here. In the x-axis panel, you have three options for modifying the x-axis of the plots. Type the minimum value in the min text field and type the maximum in the max text field. By default, JMetric will use 31 even spaced points between these. If you would like to use more or fewer evaluation points, then type a different number in the points text field. After you create a plot in JMetric, you can save it as an image. Now I'm going to discuss that part uh, Partial credit IRT plot. Um, item difficulty for the partial credit and writing scale models also influences overall location of the characteristic curves. As difficulty increases, the entire set of curves shifts to the right, and then as it decreases, the curves move to the left. Characteristic curves for polytomous items are also influenced by the threshold um, parameters. But now I just want to show you this. So here we have a pretty centered um, curve makeup, but here you can see items might be more diff this item might be more difficult, whereas here this item looks like it's a little bit easier. So we're going to come back here to item 7, we'll talk about that in a minute. So I think where I left off was Characteristic curves for polytomous items are also influenced by the threshold parameters. These values indicate the point where curves for adjacent score categories intersect and describe the extent to which the score categories are ordered. If threshold parameters increase in value as the response category increases, then each response option will be the most likely response for some range of examinability. So let's look at item number seven. Item seven. Now, I'll say this, if I'm not screen recording, um, JMetric will tell me the plot number there. So I'm screen recording and it won't give me the plot, um, but that's okay. I'm just going to wing it here. Um, so here we see that item one crosses over this curve here and it is at what I think a negative 0.8. So anyone who has a negative um, 0.8 ability or less is likely to endorse zero. 
Now we are going to move down here. And then anyone who has a negative 0.8 ability score to, um, let's say, about a zero right here is likely to endorse question number, or not question one, but item one. And then down here we see that, mm, rewind, I said it wrong. Okay, so I'm going to show you here. We have JMetric usually will tell me the plot of the um, where the two lines cross, but because I'm screen recording, it's not letting me do that right now, so I'm just going to have to tell you or guesstimate. So right here, I believe this is negative 0.8. So it's showing us that anybody who... Um, has the ability level of negative 0.8 or less is likely to endorse um, zero as an answer. Okay, and then let's look here. So from here, negative 0.8 to hmm, probably about zero, those people are more likely to endorse number one. Moving here, um, we have negative 0.4. So negative 0.4 to, let's say, it looks like maybe uh, 0.6. Those people with those ability levels, between those two ability levels, are likely to endorse item number two. Not item two, sorry, answer two. And then here we go down here, people who have the ability levels between, I would say, a 0.1 and above, anything above, are likely to endorse item or answer three. Let's take a look at maybe this one, item six. So item six is saying that anybody who has the ability level of point, or not anybody, but people who have the ability level of maybe let's say 0.2, negative 0.2, and below are likely to endorse the answer zero. And from here, let's look at from 0.2 to, hmm, what do we think that is? 0.5, they're likely to endorse one. And then from here, ability level of 0.2 to 1.2 are likely to endorse number two. And then anyone who is the ability level of 1.2 and above is likely to endorse number three. So you can see how that item might have a higher difficulty level than the other one.